Hi, and welcome to episode 131 of the Heartland Knits podcast. My name is Vicki, but you can find me as Heartland Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. And today is Sunday, January 3rd, 2016. First episode of the year. Uh, I missed recording last week. It just, last week was just a weepy week for me. So I figured you really didn't want to see that. Anyway, I have been knitting quite a bit and kind of making plans for the new year. And so I'm going to kind of catch up from the end of the year and sort of what I'm hoping to kind of work on and, and uh, go forward in my knitting for this year. So let's start out with what's on my needles. And I have a new project that you have never um, seen before. It's quite far along. I, you know, had started this, I th maybe sa Sunday last a week ago, and it is to, um, it's something that I wanted to knit for a while, and it is to kind of remake this pair of gloves. I'll put these on, and you'll see why. Like. They needed to be remade and you know yeah you could say well you know just fix that but like all of the fingers are just really worn these are gloves that I knit I think back in the year 2000 and I actually haven't worn them much in the last couple years because they were getting so thin they weren't kind of as warm as they started out but I loved them so much that I, I had I bought the yarn a couple of years ago to just do a complete redo of them exact same color and everything so I have one of them finished and I don't know there you can see that's it's all cabled all the way up the yarn for this these is a blue sky alpaca um, just they're right the regular sport weight and I just I love everything about these gloves. I love how they fit. I love how warm they are. Um, and they really are warm. They're a figuring weight. I knit these on size one needles to nine stitches to the inch. And it makes a quite dense fabric. Of course, this alpaca is kind of warm anyway. And with all these sort of cables, it's like ribbed um, in between the cables but it makes it nice and elastic. So, I mean, this is the, the glove from, you know, years and years ago, and it really has not, it's stretched out a little bit, but really not as much as some people would say, you know, never knit gloves out of alpaca because they'll stretch too much. Really, these haven't. So this is the first one that I, that I worked on and here I am this is the second one as far as I am along with the second one I um, have just the little finger and I have the opening for the thumb I I like to do um, kind of the thumb before I work on to the fingers I, I you know do the do the uh, little finger because the yarn is attached at the side and then I do the thumb and then I do the rest of the fingers but this was a pattern that I'm not sure like who the designer was. It was kind of a takeoff on a pattern um, way back then. I did a, a sample for a, a store using using a pattern like this. And I remember I, you know, because it was a sample for the store, I did it exactly like it was. But in my head, I was thinking I would want to change this and this and this. And I don't remember kind of all the particulars of things that I changed. If, you know, I changed the amount of stitches between the cables or if I changed the gauge or I can't really remember what I did. But so I am just to do the, the new pair. I'm just following off of the old pair, counting stitches, you know, how many, you know, for like the fingers, how many were in the, you know, stitches up from the front and the back did I do for each how many did I do in between and and all of that so I am looking forward to them being finished I know the last couple years I've I've uh, kind of often thought oh I wonder I 
those would be the gloves that I want to wear. And they were just getting like so bad that I couldn't wear them anymore and I missed I missed them I have let's see tiny little ball I have this tiny little ball left and this is what's left from the second skein so I will probably have enough to do the thumb and then the the last three fingers I had to have a third skein and I remembered that from when I knit, knit them the first time that um, I know that the uh, yarn shop had just gotten this the Blue Sky Alpaca, and I wanted to use it. It's so soft. I really, really love, really love uh, this yarn. This might be my year of alpaca, just because I'm having a love, a love affair with alpaca. I wore a, an alpaca um, little scarf uh, today and just, like, loved it. And so, anyway, that is kind of my one project on the needles. Ooh. Um, because, well, I have a, still things on the needles, but I did do last weekend kind of a big clearing out of old projects. You know, a lot of those that I started in August, I, I hadn't planned on trying to finish them all before the end of the year. And it, it doesn't, I don't need to go into the new year with kind of everything off of the needles. But as I was kind of looking through them, I thought well, that there were things that I knew I just was not going to kind of go back to. Things that I was thinking, um, you know, were kind of like things I wanted in the fall or wanted to work on in the fall. Um, and kind of now that it's winter, like we have lots of snow. But now that it's winter, I want to look towards spring and do things in kind of fun, brighter, springy, springier colors. And so a lot of the projects, well, there was a couple that I just put away. I didn't, you know, worry about ripping them out. They weren't that far along. There was like a handsome sweater that wasn't that far along, but um, I knew it was something that I wouldn't like want kind of in March if I, you know, worked on it now. Um, so the, the uh, projects that I kept that you might recognize, the two bows, um, Forest Darkness and Blue Flower, I hope to, to work on those. Um, Rona, she is going to be sort of my next kind of concentrated, focused knitting. I, I don't think I'm going to be like totally monogamous on projects, but I want to be a little more focused um, because a lot of them that I left are sort of bigger, bigger projects that just need more time on them. So, and I think it's part of, part of it is kind of, it's winter and I just like feel like, you know, hunkering down and and hibernating a little bit with, and, you know, work on kind of one thing and, and um, you know, just kind of delve into that. So Rona is going to be sort of my next kind of thing that I'm really um, focused on. Um, the yellow handspun um, sweater, which was my New Year's Day cast on for last year, I realized what stopped me when I was knitting it last summer, and that was that I had spun a second, or a a final skein last winter, uh, of the last four ounces of the hand spun, I spun that final skein and I'd used it in the sort of bottom ribbing of the body and then um, it reached a, you know, a few inches above that because it was um, the rest of it. I had like knit that yarn into something else before so it was a, like a, a lot of little broken up you know, skeins. And I realized I wished I would have used kind of that skein that I spun last winter sort of for the, the stockinette section of the body that it would make it kind of more consistent in, in like weight, but also there would be like a constant color running so that it wouldn't stripe quite as much. And so that's kind of where it stopped me. So I ripped out... I think I was up to about here, you know, about here, you know, past the 
the ribbing. Um, I ripped all that out and I ripped out the ribbing and so now I'm going to like rework that at some point. So there's that. I have um, a project that you've never seen that um, I started in August that I kept and it is here I can I'm not gonna like pick it up and show it to you but um, it's out of this yarn that I bought at camp. This is the um, Swedish old um, gradient. And I started sort of a lace pelerine. A pelerine is a, um, a pattern by Elizabeth Zimmerman. And so that stays. That I really, really love, but I have not really taken the time to work on it because it has sort of a long repeat that I kind of want to to uh, get through like one and as it's grown it takes a lot of time to get through it so I do want to um, get on that I have um, an Orenberg shawl that is started that I want to finish and I have this this yarn that I spun um, just recently that I wanted to do an Estonian shawl so it hasn't been started but it's staying out here because um, I do want to like do that and really um, that is kind of everything that is that I have on my needles um, I have that one sweater that was a Alice Darmore um, that I started that I'm not going to kind of work on. It really was just part of a sleeve, so it's not really that far along anyway. But um, yeah, so everything else that I had, um, I ripped out. I even ripped out a pair of hand spun socks that I started with the um, the Boundary Waters hand spun. I just, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't know quite what it means for the podcast that I'm going to be a little bit more focused. I could see me having sort of, um, you know, like the color work and like a lace project or kind of a big project and a little project or, you know, like using different like size needles, you know, like a, a little figuring weight thing and then, you know, something like a, a hat or something. I don't know. Um, but anyway, that is just kind of how I'm feeling um, right now I just um, there but I do have something in imagination that I want to start so I will show that later but I do have something off the needles and I did finish my Arnie and Carlo socks these were I'm not sure what the color number was anymore but I showed that I had them on the needles the last time so I you know they match perfectly and they've got the, the uh, um, kind of break for the afterthought heel was right in the middle of this stripe and I just I love how that looks so these are gonna be you know I told you I ripped out those hand spun socks so these are gonna be the last finished socks that you see for me in a long long time because one of the other things I decided was that I wanted, I'm going to have a moratorium on knitted socks. I know, I, I hope y'all don't leave. <laughs> I counted up, I have 43 pairs of socks, of hand knit socks in my drawer. It's like full, I can hardly squish anything else in there. And I have one sock like on the needles, the, the second of the Autumn Amore sock. Um, I left that on the needles um, just for if, if, I, if I need a project like that to, to work on for, you know, one reason or another. It'll probably live in my car in case I get stuck somewhere or something. Um, you know, because really with the two boho sweaters, I have a lot of stock in that that I can you know use if I need to you know take my car in or something you know I need like a weeding room knitting kind of project I can you know that's a lot of stock in it between those two sweaters and I just have so many pairs of socks that I just I don't really need anymore <laughs> 
So I know I have this really pretty sock yarn, but um, so the, the hand spun socks that I ripped out, I thought I have, you know, hand spun socks or, you know, that I've knit and spun and knit, but I don't have any hand spun gloves or um, mittens or even, you know, double straining it and making a hat or, or something. So I just thought I don't, I don't really need, I mean, they're, they're nice. I, you know, I added more um, pairs of socks last year than I was kind of expecting to because I bought all this Arnie and Carlos yarn. So I hope you will stick with the podcast. Even if I am not knitting socks, you can still knit socks while I'm talking, but I just, I just don't like feel the need. I, I sort of have like some of these bigger projects that I've kind of wanted to do for a long time. Um, anyway, so anyway, that was one thing off the needles. And I did finish the big blue sweater. I don't have it right here with me to show you. It's in a corner somewhere. <laughs> um, as what happens sometimes when you have like a big project that has sort of stressed you out a little bit and you just wanted to have it over. It's finished. I wore it outside of the house once because that's my rule is I have to like wear it like out like before it kind of gets put in the corner. And I did, I wore it, I wore it just to like take the garbage out or like bring the garbage can back in or something. It's very like, I wore it outside, I was like I'm wearing it, okay. And then I just put it away because I just have some bad feelings about it. I, you know, hurt my hand and I just wanted it over and I finished it. So we'll see what happens. It's kind of the same thing that happened last year when I did the big black Elizabeth Zimmerman coat, if you remember that one. That one I wore kind of just like out once. I think I wore it, maybe wore it to church once. I didn't even block it until the week before camp. And I actually took it to camp. It was still damp. And I had it like laid out in my hotel room, like drying. Um, and then we had the... Um, kind of big show and tell with everybody um, with their coats. And I wore it then and it, then it, it this in the fall it really wasn't kind of cold enough for it. And so I didn't wear it until Christmas. I wore it to church on Christmas because it was a really kind of a nice pleasant day. And I thought, oh, I can wear my, my uh, black coat. And I, I decided I love that coat now. You know, I put it away. I hated it when I finished it at first. And now I just love it. I wore it again this morning. And I just, I love wearing it. Of course, part of it is when I wore it at camp, um, my friend Sean sort of dubbed it as my Doris Day coat. She said I, I channeled Doris Day when I was wearing it. So um, I think of that every time I pull it out. And I really... I, I really, really love it. So maybe that's the same thing that will happen with the blue sweater. We'll find out. Because it's just, I don't really want to look at that anymore. <laughs> so those are my off the needles. In spinning, I do have a finished skein that I showed you I was um, working on. And this is this kind of really pretty teal. It really is that pretty. Um, it is one strand is cashmere and one strand is Tussa silk. And these were dyed by, um, or I bought these from Opulent Fibers. This is the Antilly um, color. I ended up with a little bit of the silk left. This weighs like two and a half ounces. I had um, one ounce of the Tussa and two ounces of the cashmere. So I'm short a half, you know, a half an ounce somewhere. And she was just weighing them off. So I didn't reweigh them. You know, I don't, I didn't know if she, you know, added a, a little bit. Um, but I do have some left of the Tussa on the bobbin. But I never could, I, I spun part of the cashmere on my little, um, 
spindle wood supported spindle and I never could find that bit. I've looked, but my my yarn is just like what a big jumble. It needs to go through and get organized. It's something that I have plans for um, the next month. So I left that on the bobbin. This was 600 yards um, and it's a lace weight. Um, so hopefully I will find that little bit and then be able to ply it up and, you know, add just a little bit, but still 600 yards for two and a half ounces. It's, it's, it's pretty good. So um, I have plans for new spinning, I but I didn't start anything after I finished that. I think I finished that on the 23rd. I finished plying that because I sort of su subscribe to the whole um kind of like they did in the olden days where you just didn't spin over Christmas um, and then you kind of restarted on um, the sixth, you know, distaff day or sometimes called rock day. Um, you know, people just didn't spin um, during um, Christmas. So for upcoming spinning, I do have plans, but I didn't like kind of pull the fiber out to show you, but I'll tell you about it. So I wanted to do kind of a big project for my Saxony, um, on my big Lundrum Saxony wheel. Because it generally kind of gets, I just use it for, for plying, and it really is such a nice wheel. I need to like spin on it more. So when I bought that, I, I um, went down to the fold um, and, and got it from Tony. And when I bought it, she um, said kind of pick um, kind of any fiber, you know, that she had, except for like maybe the Guanaco, which is like, what, $200 an ounce or something. <laughs> She's like, pick anything. And, you know, when you when I bought the wheel, she was going to give me a pound of it. And so I got a pound of Polworth silk um, that I didn't use for kind of my first spin on it because I, what I used for it was... Um, some hand combed Polworth that um, from one of my first fleeces. And that's what I used um, for this first spin on it. So I still have the uh, um, the Polworth silk, and I just decided that I need to like spin that up. So it's kind of a creamy color. So. That is the, the plans for that. And then I do have, um, I think I've shown it at some point, but on my Traveler, I have started a bobbin of some Angora bunny that, that I plucked for my bunny. And I had it kind of in a box um, from when I plucked it. And, you know, I... It's so fine. <laughs> so it makes, it's making a really fine um, lace single. But it takes a long time to spin. And I was kind of finally getting to where, though it's not, the box isn't empty, but I was like, I saw like, you could see progress in it. And then I was kind of cleaning in the back hall. I found a whole nother box of fiber. <laughs> so I really want to start kind of going through and getting that spun up. Um, it's a really pretty, he was really pretty chocolate, but, but I had him five years ago. So that fiber has been laying around for five years. I just, I really want to get it spun. And then I would love to knit kind of a really lacy shawl out of, out of bun bun, you know? So I had been really only spinning it kind of on, calm windless days so that I could spin it on the porch because it's so fine it kind of gets everywhere but I don't think I can wait and do that so I'm gonna like try to um, devise a system so that it doesn't get everywhere and um, kind of start working on that and you know hopefully you know getting some progress um, done on that. And then I do have hopes of, of starting a drop spindle project um, just to have, um, I'm kind of got the itch to do a little drop spindling. So for imagining, besides the, the uh, kind of Estonian hand spun shawl that I'm planning on uh, starting, 
I did buy the pattern for this because one of the shawls that I ripped out, you might remember, um, I started it last summer. It was a, um, it's a color shift yarns um, kind of gradient. It went from like a bright orange to kind of an orchidy kind of purpley pink. Um, and then it like shifted um, between those two colors. And I had started a shawl and it would have looked pretty, but it just was mind-numbingly boring to do. I just, I could not see myself like finishing. So I, I had the first skein mostly knit and then the second skein was wound. So I ripped those out. And what I'm thinking about doing is I'm thinking about this shawl, which is called the Daisy Crescent. It's a Kieran Foley um, pattern. I just think it looks you know, kind of fun to knit and just like fun to wear. So either I'm going to do it in, you you know, using that color shift yarn for the for the flowers and then just doing a, um, I think it would look really pretty with sort of a, a real light aqua to really contrast, but I, I don't have any of that. I have like just some leftover, like some Shetland or something, or I don't know. Um, but I think that would be really pretty. Or else I thought of doing this shawl with kind of the leftover bits of um, Kid Silk Haze that I have from other shawls. I think that would be really fun too. So anyway, um, I do, I am thinking about kind of that pattern. And I don't know, I, you know, kind of what I really want to do is sort of these like, bigger, um, like bigger projects um, that I kind of just want to sink my teeth into and ones that are going to take a little bit. I do want to knit some Latvian mittens. I know that there are more mittens kind of in my life because that is my favorite thing. So, um, you know, probably use those for like smaller projects, you know, while I'm knitting like a bigger thing. Um, Anyway, that's what I am sort of thinking about. So for show and tell, I really don't have all that much more, you know, besides, you know, I've kind of talked about my, my knitting goals for um, the year. Um, kind of the theme, or the theme of the year, it, like in my head, is um, moderation in all things except shoes. Because <laughs> shoes... <laughs> Because I did get, that's the only thing I do have to get you. I didn't get any really like yarny like things for Christmas, but I did get Christmas box. So I wore them this morning, so they're a little dirty on the bottom. But I did um, get Christmas fogs, and these are them. These are the Margie. And it's this little kind of low-heeled um, Mary Jane. I absolutely love this it's got this like a white scallop along the inside so um these I I just think they're like really fun they've got the bottom says <clears throat> to love or to hate the choice is yours so they have the pink bottom and then like the total thing that I just love they have a heart-shaped heel is that just not the cutest thing I love them um, and they're like totally, to me, they seemed like totally practical as practical as $300 shoes can be because, um, like one of the things that I remember from last winter was, um, you know, there would be times I'd want to wear, um, you know, bogs and a lot of mine that I had were, um, had leather soles, which even if, there's like not any new snow on the ground or, you know, if it's warmed up or whatever, but then it's like melting and the, and the, you know, ground is wet. So, um, with leather soles, you don't really want to get them all wet. So, um, these have like the rubber sole, so, and they're low heeled. So I wore, I wore them to church this morning and I got dressed and I, I got out, you know, back the car out and it was, snowing it was not supposed to snow today and I thought and I always say my Vogs 
don't do weather that you know I love I love my shoes but they don't go out when when there's like weather because I don't want to get them wrecked and so I thought okay well if any of them have to face it so these went out in the snow this morning and they seem fine but um, the they are um, really good with um, like just like tights and like a little dress like I have on or they um, look really cute with like um, hand knit socks you know and jeans so anyway they are my new my new little babies <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to tell you about was that I know way last fall I talked about I'd gone through books and I was going to put them up for sale well I did post a whole bunch of books up for sale in the Ravelry group which is Friends of Heartland Knits um, there's still a bunch there so if you haven't already seen you know go over and check it out I posted a picture of it on Instagram of just like the the uh, stack of books um, they um, are five dollars a book or five you know buy five get one free but um, five dollars plus shipping whatever um, I was you know doing media mail um, because it's the cheapest um, but just US only I'm sorry other I'm sorry other countries it's just <laughs> I can only do so much but anyway um, check that out I have so far I have just had it in the group I but I do plan on putting it kind of in the other um, uh, Ravelry kind of you know buy you know for sale um, items um, and you know after like a week if there's still some left they're just I'm just getting rid of them so if you see something that you're interested in you know let me know but that is all that I have for you today I hope you all had a really wonderful Christmas and also a wonderful um, start to your new year um, it's it's winter here now so hopefully that means a, a lot more knitting my wrist um, is it's still hurting a little bit it's certainly much better um, than it was I I still you know I knit that pair of gloves you know one and a half um, you know gloves during the week which is not all that much knitting there's 72 stitches on those um, gloves so it is a fair amount of stitches um, but they're on size one needles which just naturally feel better but even those I kind of consciously would get kind of at the end of, of one cable twist and I would put it down so that to, I wanted to you know make sure that I gave you know gave my wrist lots of breaks and um, so it is does feel better um, but I want it to get it sort of where it, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, and maybe then I'll look at the, bl at the blue coat again, <laughs> the blue jacket again. But anyway, that is all from here until I see you next week. From my heart to yours, happy knitting.